simplest form is called an element we are using many elements in our daily life the common salt is consisting of elements of sodium and chlorine water consists of hydrogen and oxygen magnesium and phosphorus used for making crackers sulfur is used as manure in agriculture gallium is used for making mobile phones and silicon is used for making computer chips there are 118 known elements in the periodic table 94 of these elements occur naturally while 24 elements have been created artificially in the laboratory classification of elements Elements are classified into metals, non-metals and metalloids based upon their chemical properties. Metals. We have tools, utensils and jewelry made from silver, copper, iron, gold, aluminium. Using pressure like hammering or rolling, we can deform these materials into various shapes. Such elements that are malleable. Malleable means material may be flattened into thin sheets or various shapes metals are generally hard and shiny elements sodium is one of the exception as it is soft all metals except mercury are solid at room temperature mercury is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature some of the metals are shown in the picture aluminum iron that means ferrum fe calcium sodium potassium magnesium aram or gold and platinum properties of metals metals are good conductors of heat and electricity metals are malleable which means they can be flattened into thin sheets metals are ductile which means they can be drawn into thin wires metals are shiny non metals non metals are generally dull and soft however diamond is shiny and also the hardest natural substance on earth non metals can be gases solids and liquids non metals such as oxygen hydrogen chlorine or gases at room temperature carbon iodine sulfur and phosphorus are solids at room temperature Bromine is the only non-metal that is liquid at room temperature. Some of the metals are given in the picture. Example: carbon, phosphorus, sulfur. Properties of non-metals. Mostly they are gases at room temperature, and they are low luster, looks dull, and they are brittle, easily broken, and they are poor conductor of heat and electricity, except graphite. Graphite is a good conductor of electricity. Metalloids. Metalloids exhibit the properties of both metal and non-metal. Example: silicon. Silicon is a metalloid. Silicon has metallic luster that means it shine like a metal. And silicon is brittle like a non-metal. And silicon is a poor conductor of electricity like non-metal. so they are exhibits both the metals and non metals properties some of the examples of metalloids are given here they are silicon boron antimony germanium difference between metals and non metals metals are lustrous they have a shiny surface non metals are non lustrous they have non shiny surface metals are generally hard non metals are soft most metals are bendable non metals are non bendable no metals are malleable and ductile non metals are non ductile most metals are good conductors of electricity non metals are bad conductors of electricity metals are good conductors of heat non metals are bad conductors of heat most metals are making ringing sound when struck hence they are used to make objects like bells non metal does not make any sound when they struck compounds a compound is a pure substance that is formed when the atoms of two or more elements combine chemically in definite proportions 
compounds exhibit properties entirely different from the properties of their constituent element for example the atoms of the elements hydrogen and oxygen combine chemically in a fixed ratio to form the compound water however water does not have the exact same properties as hydrogen and oxygen for example at room temperature water exists as liquid while hydrogen and oxygen exist as gases also oxygen supports fire whereas water is used as a fire extinguisher similarly common salt is a compound made up of elements sodium and chlorine it is used in our food whereas sodium and chlorines are poison how sodium is highly reactive solid at room temperature it burns vigorously when in contact with water and chlorine is yellowish green poisonous gas at room temperature so they are both poison and unsafe for consumption but as a compound we are using it as a salt we are using it for cooking properties of compounds a compound is formed only when the constituent elements combine in a fixed proportion for example h2o that means for forming the water molecule we need two hydrogen and one oxygen not exit to the two hydrogen and one oxygen okay then the properties of a compound are different from those of its constituent elements a compound cannot be broke down by physical methods why this is because compound is made up of different elements is it so they are chemically combined example sodium chloride cannot be separated by physical methods such as filtration a compound can be separated into its constituent elements by chemical methods only difference between an element and a compound an element is the simplest substance a compound is a chemical substance formed by the combination of two or more elements elements combine to form compounds compounds can be split into elements atoms are the fundamental particles of an element molecules are the fundamental particles of a compound symbol of an element a symbol is an abbreviation or short representation of a chemical element there is a unique symbol for each element it represents one atom of the element the symbol is usually derived from the name of the element which is either in english or latin these symbols are allocated by the international union of pure and applied chemistry iupac Dalton symbol Dalton was the first scientist to use the symbol for elements in a very specific sense when he used a symbol for an element he also meant a definite quantity of that element that is one atom of that element in the same way bezelier suggested that the symbols of elements may be made from one or two letters of the names of the element symbols for some elements as proposed by dalton is given in the picture rules followed while assigning symbol to an element chemical symbol usually consists of one or two letters the symbol of most elements corresponds to the first letter of their english name for example element hydrogen uses the symbol h because the first letter of that element is h in the same way fluorine uses f oxygen o carbon c phosphorus p sulfur s potassium k here potassium uses the symbol k why the latin name of potassium is gallium k a l i u m so it uses k and uranium it is u elements represented by symbol of two letters when there is more than one element that begins with the same letter the symbol take two letters the first letter is capitalized while the second letter has a lower case 
For example, the names of both hydrogen and helium begins with H. So, hydrogen is represented by the symbol H and helium by HE. Similarly, the symbol for carbon is C, while the symbol for calcium is Ca, chlorine is Cl and chromium is Cr. Now come to the table. Look at the table. The elements are aluminium, organ, arsenic. So they are having the first letter as C. So aluminium uses the second letter as its symbol, Al. Organ, Ar. Arsenic, Yes, here arsenic, it is using the third letter because organ and arsenic having the second letter same. So arsenic uses its third letter as its symbol. Note barium and bromine. Barium and bromine both they are have uses their second letter. Then chromium and gopart. Chromium uses the third letter, gopart uses the second letter. Calcium and chlorine. Calcium uses the second letter and chlorine uses the third letter. Why? Both chlorine and chromium has a second letter same. Elements represented by their Latin name. The symbol for some elements are derived from their Latin names. For example, the symbol for gold is AU after its Latin name Aram. Similarly, the symbol for copper is Cu after its Latin name cuprum. Let's see some more examples. For lead, the Latin name is plumbum, so we are using Pb. In potassium, the Latin name is gallium, so using the symbol K. For iron, the Latin name is ferrum, so we are using the symbol Fe. For mercury, the Latin name is hydrogen, so we are using the symbol Hg. For sodium, the Latin name is natrium, so we are using the symbol Na. Chemical formula. Often we hear that water is H2O. This is the chemical formula of water molecule, isn't it? So this means that each molecule of water has two hydrogen atoms combined with one oxygen atom. So, a chemical formula is a symbolic representation of one molecule of an element or a compound. It provides information about the elements present in the molecule and the number of atoms of each element. Therefore, the chemical formula tells us the types of atoms and the number of each type of atom in one molecule of substance. For example, take water molecule. The small number beside the hydrogen atom is called subscript. It tells us the number of atoms that elements in the molecule. Hence, there are two hydrogen atoms in water molecule. Now, note the oxygen atom. When there is no number of besides oxygen symbol, it means that there is only one atom of that element present in the molecule. Hence, there is one oxygen atom in an water molecule. Let's see some more example. Take water molecule. What is the chemical formula of water molecule? It is H2O. So two hydrogen and one oxygen. So number of atoms are two hydrogen and one oxygen. And in ammonia the chemical formula is NH3. So one nitrogen and three hydrogen. In carbon dioxide one carbon and two oxygen because its chemical formula is CO2. Then hydrochloric acid. What's the formula? HCl. So one hydrogen and one chlorine. In nitric acid, HNO3. That means one hydrogen, one nitrogen and three oxygen. In sulfuric acid, what's the chemical formula? H2SO4. So two hydrogen, one sulfur and four oxygen. Atomic 